Not hold grudges. <laughs> Bro, grudges are garbage. Yeah. Yeah. Grudges are fucking garbage. Yeah. Grudges are the execution of a weak man. One, I think that a lot of people get hurt by the ideology of perfection. So I think one of the reasons, long before I had DRock or a team, I was able to by myself, while running businesses, be active on every platform, is because I didn't ideologically think about every single piece of content. I think when you're trying to make every piece perfect for yourself, perfection is usually just another word for insecurity. You know, everyone's overthinking it. And so one, it's to feel comfortable with that. Number two is to be okay with not being on six platforms. You know, I think sometimes we feel too much pressure to be everywhere. I talk about it, I'm like, be everywhere, post a lot. A lot of people can't manage that and that's okay. I believe it has to do with insecurity of success of the piece of content. The biggest reason people didn't go to TikTok when they were winning on Instagram was they didn't have the humility and the self-confidence to not be successful on TikTok immediately. So I think the biggest reason people don't produce is more of a mental game than, it's not hard to produce content for six platforms. It's really not. You can do it. It's that people fear lack of success in numbers from a vanity standpoint which stop them from actually doing it. So I think humility, humility is one of the true superpowers of a scaled influencer or content creator. Being okay with starting at zero or being okay if the content's not doing great. I'll give you another, I mean, for example, with me on TikTok, even though I know it's the most important platform, I don't have the time to produce original TikToks, so I know my post-produced content doesn't maximize my ability to win on TikTok, but I'd rather still put out stuff and get what I can than be insecure that I'm only getting 50,000 views on a TikTok when I have 13 million followers. That doesn't register to me as a negative. For too many people, it does register as a negative. Gary, Miguel Bennett, I'm Director of Basketball here at, at Stars Prep. Uh, appreciate you. Um, can you give, can you share with us, with these guys, like the top, like your top three point of emphasis for having a successful mindset? I got you. And, and it, this is clear for me, because you know I got gray hairs, boys, now. Like I've been living it now, I'm 46 now. Now I feel, I felt this at 16, but I know it at 46. Number one, accountability. This is gonna set you free, whether it's true or not in every situation, if you always know that it's always your fault, it sounds crazy, but that will keep you crazy happy. The amount of athletes I've met that blame coaches, even at the professional level, blows my mind. There are dudes in this room who always are talking shit blaming coach. Right now, I see some of these good looking faces. I know behind that face, I'm like, that kid right there. You know, like, like it's real. Do not blame anybody but yourself. It will make you happy. It's a huge mindset. Number two, I am blown away by people's entitlement. Just because your mom and dad had sex at the right exact second to give you athletic ability doesn't mean nobody owes you shit. So accountability, eliminating, First, accountability. Second, eliminating entitlement. Nothing is owed to any of y'all. It is what it is. It's like sports. It's a game. So just because somebody gave you a scholarship or gave you an at-bat, it's you. You're not owed anything. Coach, if you've got real accountability, like this is on me, and you don't think anybody else owes you shit, the last one is in a different school, but all together, those three change people's lives. The third one is simple, which is be nice. This is a crazy one, especially at this age. If you realized how life actually plays out, and you will one day when you're 60, 70, 80, the number one hack, the the smartest move, be kind, which is why, Coach, earlier I said be nice to yourself, because nobody's nice to anybody else if they don't like themselves. The only people in here that are mean, trying to tear down others, because they're hurting. When people are tearing down other people, that just exposes that they're hurt. But if you're lucky enough to feeling good, give roses to people, because people are gonna be the fuel that gets you there. That's my mindset game, Coach.
some people don't maybe have the disposition or perhaps they don't react well to the kind of dopamine levels that get released when you chase kind of attention if you like on social media what, what do you say to people who are kind of struggling balancing that that long before social media came along humans struggled with that balance dopamines have come in many forms including interacting with other human beings this narrative that is quite popular which is blaming technology for your struggles is a losing game I want to remind everybody who's listening that only 30 years ago we would blame the television we would blame magazines showing models at 90 pounds as a bad force and all the things we today try to point fingers towards social media platforms which I want to remind everybody are completely empty vessels that human beings fill information with is something that has been historically true there was a time and age that I could have sat in this exact studio in the 1960s and you would ask me questions of Gary what do you say about the situation where we have the Beatles and Elvis disproportionately impacting children and believing in this rock and roll thing. This is human evolution. We continue to be incredibly infatuated with finding ways to point fingers towards the current without pointing thumbs to ourselves and leaning into accountability and self-awareness of how to deal with the macro. And I think I'm very empathetic to people's concerns about the amount of time that children and other humans spend on this platform. I want to remind people that there is incredible good from those things. There are people who spend time FaceTiming their elders in different countries because of technology and social media. So I think we're in the current state where we're looking for the shortcomings of the platform, which of course there are, because human beings have shortcomings. You think you can get talking to like your college buddies, um, like staying in touch with people who are, are just like the average Joe, do you think you can get perspective of them or like a situation, you're having trouble in business or you're trying to figure something out and their like idea or their like, input in it you think you could get like perspective from people not connected like that or on the outside that can help you that's become a, a better question. person or better that's boss a, that's a great question i i actually easily do i think it's audacious and ludicrous for somebody who has had professional success think that like somebody that like my brain works a little bit different i don't think success is defined by your bank account do you know me miserable millionaires i know like to me i'm looking to be happy and like, I have unlimited knowledge of people making less than 100K, making less than 50K that are, have, are happy. Like I have buddies that I grew up with that are like pumped making 80K a year. Nice salary, it's a nice salary. It's, I hate when people are like 80K, like the world's fucked up. Like 80K, like if you don't, now, if you, don't, if you live within your means, but like, by the way, 80K comes with a lot less pressure. Do you understand what my life is? I wake up, I go right to my phone. Offices in Singapore, offices in fucking, you know, in, in Mexico City, I have 40, I have 20 employees that are, that are Ukrainian and Russian. Do you understand what I'm dealing with today? Wow, yeah. Like when you, like Diddy and Biggie, that whole more money, more problems, that's real shit, bro. Yeah. Like, no, like no, yeah. I don't envy being, un, like I'm actually upset that I'm an alpha one. I'd rather be a number four. Yeah. You know, like I'm a fucking firefighter. When I have to fill out the fucking, you know, immigration forms when I go into other countries and they're like occupation, I literally write firefighter. <laughs> because when you're at the top of a fucking big company, when you're doing, when you're out there the way I am, where everyone's gonna have opinions and feelings on you, you're just fucking taking punches all day. Look, I, I think you need to, here's where, you, here's where I'm trying to get you to go. You need to get into a totally different place with your self-esteem. You need right. to love yourself. That's why the biggest moment of this talk was you're not negative. You're just vulnerable. That was the right. biggest moment. Because when you wake up and you're like, I'm scared today. Right. And and I need to get less scared today. That is huge, huge compared to waking up and saying, I'm negative. I'm right. a bad guy. That's a game changer, Alexis. That's a game changer. Yeah. It's it's like hard though. Like I try to. I really, really like there's a lot of times where I'm like, okay, like just stop thinking like that, you know, like. You got this. No, you know, it's and- it's you have to understand it's ingrained in you. So what you need to do is practice. What do I mean by that? The next this one friend you've got right now for a year, the first time he does something that doesn't pop off properly, you have to fucking you have to like email me or DM me or watch this video game. You have to forgive him. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. That holds grudges. <laughs> Bro, grudges are garbage. Yeah. Yeah. Grudges are fucking garbage. Grudges are the execution of a weak man.